Hello. In part four, we computed the cross product between our two partial derivatives. Okay, and that gave us this mess here. So we are now going to simplify it down. So the first step is to factor out b plus a cosine of s. Okay, so we're going to write b plus a cosine of s. Okay, and we're going to put in square brackets, like so, and we multiply that by, well, simply factor out a b plus a cosine of s of the i term, and we're going to get a cosine of s multiplied by the sine of t. Okay, and we multiply that by your i, and then we add that factor out of b plus a cosine s of the j term, we just get this right here. So we add a cosine of s multiplied by the cosine of t. All right, and we multiply that by j. Okay, and then we need to factor out of b plus a cosine of s of our k term, which is this these two lines here. Okay, and so we get plus, remember this is still in the brackets, I just don't have room to write it all down. So plus a sine of s multiplied by the sine squared of t. Okay, and to that we add a sine of s times the cosine squared of t, and we multiply that by k. Okay, so we simply fact factor out our b plus a cosine of s, these two terms here. Cosine of t multiplied by cosine of t gives us cosine squared of t, and our sine of t multiplied by our another sine of t gives us sine squared of t. Okay, so we get this term here, and we can put the brackets back in like so. Okay. Right, so now we can simplify even further, okay? This term here, our k term, okay? This whole thing here, what does this become? Well, we can factor out an a sine of s, because they're both, it's in both of the terms. So we get a sine of s multiplied by sine squared of t, plus cosine squared of t. Okay, and we multiply that by k. And of course, this is your usual easy trigonometric identity. This simply becomes 1. Okay, so we get a sine of s times k. Okay, so the whole mess then becomes b plus a cosine of s b plus a cosine of s multiplied by a cosine of s sine of t i and then we add to that a cosine of s cosine of t times j and then we add or a sine of s times k. Okay, brilliant. So what we need to do now is take the magnitude. Okay, remember the definition of the surface integral had to, you had to um, take the cross product, but then you also had to take the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, so take magnitude magnitude okay so we said yeah okay so we had the cross product between s and t now we need to take the magnitude by putting um straight brackets in okay right so 
we have our term here. All we need to do is simply take the square root. Okay, that's and you take yeah. So you take the square root and you square each term in the square root. That is the definition of magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude of a cross product. Okay, so we simply take the magnitude of this big term here. So this becomes b plus a cosine of s multiplied by the square root, okay, this is going to go on for a bit, I think, um, of a squared, where we square each term, so a squared cosine squared of s sine squared of t, okay, then we add, let's do it down here, this is still the square root, okay, then we add a squared cosine squared of s cosine squared of t, okay, yep, and then we add our a squared sine squared of s, like so, okay. Let's just check that I've done that right. Uh, a squared, a squared cosine of sine of squared t, yeah, t, a squared sine squared of s. Okay, so can we then simplify this down? Let's go on to a new fresh page, shall we? All right. Okay, I'll just write it one more time and see how I've room this time. You can skip this if you want. Uh, see, we have that. Okay, and then we multiply that by the whole of the square root term. So we have a squared cosine squared of s sine squared of t a squared cosine squared of s. Oh, we don't have room this time. Um, multiplied by the cosine squared of t, like so. And then we add a squared sine squared of s. Okay, that's multiplied by that. Alright, that is still taking the square root of the whole thing. Okay, so what's this equal to? Well, let's write this here. So we still have the square root. This is equal to a squared cosine squared of s, okay, multiplied by, just factor out a sine squared t and a cosine squared of t. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so we multiply that by the sine squared of t plus the, sorry, the sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t. And then we add a squared sine squared of s. Okay, like so. And of course, we know that becomes a 1. So, this now becomes the square root of a squared cosine squared of s multiplied, no, sorry, add a squared sine squared of s. Okay. Alright, then this obviously you can tell by now where we're going. This becomes the square root of a squared. Factor after cosine squared of s and sine squared of s, we get cosine squared of s plus the sine squared of s. Okay, that also becomes a 1. So overall, this becomes a very easy and pleasing answer after all of this calculation. This is equal to the square root of a squared, which is simply a. 
So, we can write the magnitude of the cross product between the partial derivatives with respect to S and T of R is simply A. Okay, and in the final video, we're going to actually do some integration. And that should bring us to our final formula.